All right, welcome back. Welcome to my channel. <clears throat> in case you are new to my channel, this is All Back Tutors, where you learn new things. All right, in this video, we're considering an introduction to computer system. You know, in this video, we want to understand what a computer is. Should be able to distinguish between data and information. They will also look at the basic function of a computer system, the features of a computer system, as well as the various components of a computer system. Now, somebody may want to ask, what is a computer? You know, that's the first thing you should consider when um, venturing into a course like this. Now, you will agree with me that that word computer actually originated from the word compute, which means to calculate. You know, in, in the early days, humans were the people who does the calculation jobs. So the, the actually the first computer systems were actually humans because they do the computations of data such as census data, which is a very large data. But because these things are taking um, occupying so much time and energy, so man has to think of how better ways to carry out these computations. And that is why the, the invention of a computer system came about. And you agree with me that today, in almost every part of our systems, we have computers embedded in them, right from our wristwatch, our smartwatches, our smart lenses, up to every part of the things that we use today, our digital PC, our digital televisions, our washing machines, all these things we use are ICT embedded. This, for example, this is our example of our daily lives, our cell phones. Everybody's making use of their phone. You can see everybody's focused, goal-minded, right within their phones, carrying out several computations outside of the normal call that we receive with from the phone. Now, key definition: a computer system, as the name implies, you can be called is as a device that helps, that receives user input, and which, can be, which is data. Then these data are being processed on that set of instructions, which is called program, that help us to produce the desired output called information. And if also used, you can also, as well as stores that output for future reference. In other words, a computer receives data, stores that data, or processes the data, to get desired information. If that is the case, now let's look at what actually is called data. You know, we call about data, data as user input. We say a data can be known as the, the raw fact that this may not make much meaning to you. In a simple term, data are just value, set or set of value that include numbers, text, graphics, sound, or videos that need to be processed. For example, you can create a video and you need to edit those videos. So that's also passing through the process stage. We also have numbers, we want to add two or three numbers. This can be data to get the desired output. We can also have text, maybe we want to, um, we want to compose a letter. This can also be put together to get the desired output. In other words, data are simply computer input. As you get information, when these data like text input are being processed and organized in a given context to become useful to the user, to the end user, they will call it an information. In other words, information is the result gotten after data has been processed. Now, just in a clear difference between data and information, like I said earlier, computer inputs are called data. The output obtained from the data after being processed is being called an information. Now, for example, in a class whereby we carry out a test, maybe we, are, we gave test to a class, computer test, the individual student's course can be categorized as data. Why? Whereas, if you want to calculate the average score of the entire class to know to number of those that pass and those that fail in that class, that can be known as information. For us to calculate the number of students that pass and those that fail a particular course was, was being able was achieved with the aid of the data, which is the raw score of those students. 
So when we process a given data to derive a useful information, that is what we know as information processing cycle. Let's move ahead to consider what a program is. If you recall, we said a computer is a, comp is, is a device that accepts data, processes the data under the set of instructions called programs to give us our output. Now, what is now a program? A program can be called an application or a software, but these are instructions or set of instructions that tells the computer what to do. It helps us to process an input manipulate those inputs to give us the desired result. For example, you want to add two numbers, maybe two plus two. We can give an instruction to add the numbers using an arithmetic operations that involve an addition sign. So, or we want to subtract two numbers, either, either be to subtraction sign or to divide two numbers. So it, the program helps us to receive the input, then manipulate or carry out that op operation to give us the desired output. If that is the case, you can just say that programs are a set of instructions that instruct a computer on what to do. If that is the case, from our definition of what a computer is, we could bring out four basic functions of a computer system, which we can use the acronym SOAP to recall. For example, they say a computer is a device that can accept data that takes user input. In other words, a computer can accept data, and that data can be manipulated. In other words, a computer system can process data, and those data can, can be processed to give us the desired information, that that computer system can output information. And even the, the data and information that we have on our system can be stored for future references. In other words, a computer also has the ability to store data which is four acronyms to that you can store, you can accept data, you can process data, you can output data, as well as store data. Now we have a simple input process output model. Now the computer can accept data through an input device, which can be our keyboard, our mouse. Then these um, data can be manipulated to the processing unit. Which, and this unit has three categories embedded. We have the control unit, which coordinates all the activities of a computer system. We have the arithmetic and logic unit, which handles all the arithmetic operations in that system. Then we also have the memory. That's the memory works in hand with the processing system to help us to store data that are being used. Then after the data has been processed, we also have to get a desired output from our output devices, like our monitor, or a hard copy from our printer, and that to that. In our subsequent videos, we'll, we'll be looking at in various components how these data work. Now, let's look at a basic of a computer system. This is where we began. You know, have this um, a simple example of a computer system in our front, which are itemized. We have the the system unit, which some of us call the CPU. You no, know, that's the system unit. Then we also have the monitor. We have the keyboard, we have the mouse, and also the speaker. But in our current computer system these days, we have all these components embedded into one. Unlike here, we have a separate component. And like for example, this is what we have. We have what's called the all-in-one PC, where we have the we have the visual display unit housing, the CPU, the speaker, the CD drive, and the USB port. You know, in our former um, in our formal um, image of our computer system, the speaker is standalone. Likewise, the the CPU, the the system unit. But in this case now, this the, vid, the visual display unit is, is embedded, is housing the CPU, the speakers, and other components of it. We also have our wireless mouse and also the keyboard, which helps us to supply inputs into the system. That is where we are today. But as because the future of an ICT, you could see that we don't need uh, these components any longer as time as to innovation uh, proceed. You know, these components will have where embedded in our human bodies, whereby we could 
who could envisage or could see what actually we are trying to compute. You don't need to like you have to gather your computer systems to do this work. For example, look at the, the screen on the video. It's like a man having a, a, a visual display on his lenses that he should be able to at least to carry out his computations even without having the physical computers in front of him. Let's just take example. For example, what are the three things that you might one might one might think that a computer system can do a lot of things in our time right now that there is nothing a computer can do that we cannot do. But let me just put it to you that if is it possible for us to have certain things that a computer can do today that humans can do that a computer cannot do? Is it actually possible? Let's look at. All right, number one, a computers can't program themselves, and that is the very truth about it. If you recall, we said a computer system, we're talking about programs, programs are instructions that tell a computer what to do. In other words, it doesn't know what to do. It is the programmer that we ourselves that programs those instructions on how a computer system should work. Number two, humans fall in love. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's what about it. A complex that doesn't fall in love because they don't have feelings. So humans fall in love. I don't want to make us hilarious. All right. A complex system doesn't have the mind of their own. For example, a computer can't think by themselves. It is it is garbage in, garbage out. It is what the programmer um, supplies to the system that he has to work with. Then again, a computer cannot know what is important. For example, when you have two, two life scenarios that and one needs urgent attention, you as a person, as an individual, you, 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 you have intuition to actually know the right thing to do at the right time or, or what to do first before the other. But a, a computer system doesn't know that which is important. So he does our activities in batch processing as we supply data to these systems. Now let's look at key advantage of a computer system over humans. To be honest, we have seen some certain things that a humans can do and that a computer system cannot do right now. But there are other advantages of a computer system that over humans, number one, is that they can work faster and more accurately than humans. You know, those days that were humans were computers to compute a to compute some setting data take millions of days. You know, I, I recall the early computers we have, the abacus. You know, to us to do counting, it takes a lot of time. But these days now, we have, as IT has, has advanced, we have a computer that can work faster in nanoseconds to produce an accurate result than humans. Humans are bound to make mistakes as they progress in their journey. But again, when a human can actually process some amount of information, and still recall, but a computer system, there's a sense of how huge the data or the amount of, the, of information that it has, it can never forget. It can never forget as long as there is a backup to our system. So a computer system can help us to store a certain huge amount of information for subsequent usage. In our subsequent video, we'll be looking at various components of a computer system. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned.